We use a quote first of all from Construction News the other day. I think it's Hal Davis that said this, and he said the changes are not being done to change the standards we work to, it's about how we behave. And he says in there as well, the industry has an opportunity to demonstrate a willingness to embrace these reforms and regain the public trust. And I think the point of the staircase that was made by Scott Browning earlier, Alicia, is that the trust is gone in single staircase build. One of the things I, I think exists is that we say the product manufacturers, it was said earlier, maybe we need to test to the scenario. But actually, we've got scenarios which are impossible to test to. And that's where this comes in. I don't think you can read the clarity on it, but my biggest thing last has always been about Regulation 7. Adequate and proper materials appropriately fixed for the circumstances, adequately mixed and prepared, applied fixed using, used adequate for the function for which it was designed. Fancy that, eh? And you install it in a workmanlike manner. And the thing is, when you look at the new Building Safety Act, it talks about this as well in the same language. And what it refers you to is a list in CPR of all the safety critical products. And I think there's 35 groupings of which one is fine. I think the point was made earlier by you, issue as well. What about the other 33? <laughs> What about your water regulations? What about your structural safety? It all comes into that same Building Safety Act. So when you look at what's going on with all the gateways, we're talking about Gateway 1, Gateway 2, Gateway 3. If you get to Gateway 2, but you've never considered how you classify and put these products in the building as a system, I think Tim said it earlier, about getting to like a readiness level with it, kit of parts, you don't know if you're going to fit a Gateway 2, do you? <laughs> so this is the bit of work that's got to go on. This is why I've actually got to go through kit properly, classify it. Classify it for what it is, don't use the word fire stop, it's a fire damper, for which uh, the seven frame types, one involves bat. I love being funny, but uh, if I see a guy on site with a trail of plaster putting it around a damper, I'd have to take a picture, because it'd be amazing. Especially from a fire stop and company, because it's not really their, their trade, is it? Which is where the competency pie, all this comes into it. Once you know that, guess what, you can actually QA onto site. <coughs> if you look at the five points, how you get there, building time, space risk, how it operates, classification, Substrate, install it. That is a culmination of all of those products in that wall, not just the one you're looking at. And that's the system approach, which is really hard as well, because when we say about CDP, as mentioned earlier, you've got to know what all that kit is, what all it wants, early on, to get the wall type right. Otherwise, people just go and put shaft wall everywhere. I'm going to use white wall. Yeah, you just got to make the product work for the substrate. Not going to happen, is it? We'll give you your golden thread for product selection, how you get there. Then you can start talking about builders' work at the end, because a lot of the time we talk about builders' work, and you go, what are you putting in the alp? I don't know. Well, I've only engineered it. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I don't know. It's cheaper. I suppose the question, though, is not when is a door not a door. When is a door not just a door is probably the better question to ask, because like the, the, the title of the film, when it comes to doors, when it comes to ironmongery, it's complicated. For example, when's a door not a door? When is well, when it's a fire door, and we'll be talking more about that um, throughout this, when, when it's a non-fire door, because you can get applications where it isn't, maybe there's acoustics on it, security, it might need tested to pass 24, you might need to automate it, if you do, then you're going to need to ensure that it's installed to the correct standard at EN 16005. Access control, what kind of access control do you need on it? Emergency escape and panic escape. There are differences. You will need to use different forms of hardware in each different circumstance. So when is a door not just a door? A door has all of these different potential uses in a building. So what makes it a fire door as opposed to just a big block of wood that's hanging in the space? It really comes down to the fire test evidence because that's what's going to make it into a fire door. So for a fire door, it has to prove that it has been through the correct test. So, European standards, EN 1634 parts 1 to 3. British standards, BS 476 parts 20 to 22. And then when you get to the iron mongery product to be used on a fire door, you should have the valid fire test evidence that it has been tested on a similar fire door. It's not just a matter of putting any iron mongery on any fire door. Now at the moment, testing for both the EN 1634 and the 476 standards are currently acceptable for fire door testing under approved document B. That was out for consultation earlier on in the year. God help us all if it goes through to take it away, but maybe that's a personal view on BS 47622 for fire doors, because that'll have a massive implication on the, the fire door and the iron industry. And then when it gets into the stuff that my members are really into, 
for the Guild of Architectural Ironmongers when it needs ironmongery. The one thing about ironmongery is, particularly when it comes to uh, the specification of it, is you don't realise that it's there until it's actually not very good. And then you realise that it's not very good. So if the ironmongery specifier does their job right, if the installer does their job right, you will use ironmongery. You wouldn't even have noticed that you had that pull handle going through the door there. If it's loose, you will. One thing that has been said about pull handles or about handles in general is they say that they are the handshake of the building. That's, that's actually a quote that somebody, and I didn't just make that up, but when you think about it, it's the first thing that you touch in a building. So it's really important because first impressions do last. So how to specify the iron membrane? Most people don't realise this. It can take up to three years to learn to do it properly. And that's actually true. And in fact, when I did it about 20 years ago, it was a four-year course. So we and the GAI, the Guild of Architectural Ironmongers, have a diploma course where we teach people how to specify this stuff properly. And we have a methodology of doing it where you hang the door, you close it, you lock it, you operate it, you protect it with your signs, or sorry, you protect it with your kicking plates, you'll label it with the correct signage, you'll seal it, acoustic, weather, intumescent, and then any other extras that are involved on the project. There is a whole process involved in specification of ironmongery that most people don't even realise. In order to do that, though, we need the correct information. And getting back to what was talked about earlier, it's about getting it right at the very, very start and not having to just take a guess. So it's ensuring that in addition to the numbered floor plans that you'll receive, that you'll have the right door schedule with the correct fire ratings, thicknesses of doors, dimensions, these are all critical details to ensure that you get your iron mongery right. The joinery head and jam details. Um, details on if it needs held open, if it needs access controlled, if it needs that part operator. All of these things need to be considered in the specification. And then the correct standards. Iron mongery in itself is filled full of standards. It's what we live, eat and breathe. But there's an awful lot of the standards that we have are harmonised or now designated. So I talked about hanging it, closing it, locking it. Some of these are key critical, what we call essential ironmongery. So if it's going to be ironmongery on a fire door, for your hinge it needs to be CE or in the future, UKCA marked to EN 1935. For your door closer it's 1154. For your electromagnetic it's 1155. For your door coordinator it's 1158, etc, etc. Each individual <coughs> component has its own standard needs to be tested and should be CE marked. And then when it's properly specified by the experts, as I mentioned earlier, there's a push more and more now towards competency to ensure that your product is properly specified, to ensure that your product is uh, properly installed. What we do in our, in our trade association is we have a number of different qualifications that can take three years, plus lifelong learning beyond that as registered professionals where you will have to um, have your CPD points rather like Reba. I bet you never even thought you would be hearing any of this about iron hungry and fire doors when you come in, but it just shows there's granular detail in each building. We reckon that iron hungry is worth one and a half to two percent of the value of the entire building, but <coughs> if it's done wrong, it has a huge impact on the, on, on the performance of the building itself. So when is a door not just a door? Well, when it's actually a lifesaver, because that's a real life situation there. So that is two sides of the same door. So on that side there, there was the fire. Non-fire on the left hand side. The fire door did its job. It preserved the compartmentation. It meant the fire did not spread throughout the building. So when is a door not just a door? When it is a lifesaver. And it's interesting, Douglas, because you know I went through the ones at the beginning pretty quick because I know we're, we're, we're strapped for time here. But when you look at those big ontology diagrams and you look at a door, you could apply that yeah. to that. You'll get the same example. But I think for all of us, I think it's how we make it simpler to digest it because it's so complex, all of this stuff. And I didn't start off with those diagrams to get to that point where I was like, wow, no one's ever going to get this right. How, and actually, how do you specify it? How do you specify fire damp at the moment? You know, CDP by contractor, when it all relies on knowing the risk of the space to classify it correctly. 
But if you're a fire engineer, no disrespect, do they know the risk of the space if we don't know what the space is because the developer hasn't told the architect to pass it on to them? So we talked about change earlier, is that the big thing of all of this is that having a way of doing golden thread, and my view is pretty simple, is that there's only two golden threads. There's actually how you get to the product in relation to the space, how it all works as a system, then it's just about patching serial numbers. You can't put that kind of golden thread in BIM at the moment, as far as I can see, because there's, there's no way of recording it. You have to go to an external shed, if that makes sense.